Uh, squad, what is going on? It's me, Captain Frost. Today, we are live action. You already know what it is. Here to bring you yet another review of this Bleach anime. And I gotta tell you, man, this episode was very colorful, to say the least. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing, because, yes, it did look very, very good, but also very colorful. But starting out, I did notice we've seen a couple things that were not in the manga. You know, we've seen Tessa Zaymo fighting some soul dads. We've seen Momo. We also got a couple shots of what, Hasagi, um, Ikaku, and Yumachika. But real quick, let me touch on Momo. Was she struggling against four soul dads? Four soul dads? Like, come on now. I understand she's not a powerhouse. I understand she doesn't have a bunkai. If she does have a bunkai in like the time, time, time skip, maybe I missed that or forgot all about it because to me she's irrelevant. Kubo can write her off and I wouldn't give two flying fig newtons at all. I mean, I understand each character in Bleach has their role to play and you can place them in certain brackets in terms of how they are relevant or irrelevant, but that's still, you know, based on like the category. So for example, the fighters, the main main cast the supporting cast those are the you know that's like the the bread and butter of the series momo she's just known for being eisen's lieutenant being a sucker for eisen and being toshiro's childhood friend that's it that's it yeah she's real good at keto but yeah look look how good that was doing her to fight to, you know struggling against four soul deaths i mean damn i mean is she let me know down below do you think she's the weakest lieutenant because to be struggling against four soldats, I can understand if she was surrounded. But soldats are the Quincy grunts. You're a lieutenant, you were in Shikai and everything, like you, whatever, whatever. So, one thing, moving on, oh boy. And I said in my last review, I was gonna touch on this, the whole Quincy, you know, and hollow explanation thing. So, I will never forget the first time I read this. I actually felt like, like, come on now. So this whole time, for years, for years, with fans reading this, and in the Bleach universe, centuries and centuries, you know, just, so this whole time, this whole time, no, that wasn't the reason why Quincy's hated Hollows. You know, we always thought that Quincy's, you know, according to the lore, Quincy's didn't like Hollows because, you know, they felt like, oh, they, don't, they didn't need to have their souls cleansed and go to soul society or hell whichever their fate you know led them to be but it's like so now all of a sudden oh yeah it's because you know the hollows are poisonous to the quinces you know and i first read that i said oh, this is very convenient that so they just figured it out yep so this is what it really is all of that before was a lie and it's just seemed very convenient that they figured this out right now years later in the story on top of this moment when the Bunkai's got stolen and they really needed them to get back. And I, I, I just, I'm like, alright, that just seemed hella convenient. And I know you know what I'm talking about. A lot of you have read mangas and animes when you got some type of explanation or something that was explained or you were led to believe way in the beginning of the series just got thrown out the series. Like, just, just thrown out. And I remember reading to myself, did Kubo already have this planned out? Or did he just come up with this on the fly and it just made so much sense that it could just fit right in and be like, okay, that makes sense, but I don't know. But then, of course, I'll never forget this extra part. When they said, well, well Miyuri was like, you know, I find it funny that they never took the powers of the Hollows. They just made them soldiers. You know, they ran cards, you spotted it. They, they never took the resurrections. But my thing is, so they, they noticed that, which is true. Okay, they never took the power of the Iran card, they spotted them, but they just automatically linked it to up oh, it's because it's dangerous to do so you know and that's what Uhara even said it when he noticed when Kurja he absorbed Aeon his image just transformed that's when he was I'm just thinking to myself but how do you come up with the theory just because his image transformed you think it's poisonous you know because I'll never forget when that chapter first came out people was thinking like wait a minute Kurja he absorbed them and nothing happened so what the hell people was wondering that and that's what made people think that Kubo just come up with this out of nowhere I also noticed we got a chance to see those special bugs that squads will have developed because yes in the manga they did mention them but yes in the anime we finally got to see them in action now the part I really love especially is the music that kicked in 
once they all start to get their bunkai's back i love it because new moments along with new music it makes it that much more better so far i'm loving the tracks with this new bleach anime so far i mean i'm loving it i'm, I'm it's like it's a mixture of the old tracks being remixed and along with new tracks and now you have the new tracks that are also being remixed because this track was a it's a Yamamoto's theme, I believe. When he first went Shikai and took out Drus Crawl, you know, I love that theme. That's on uh, one of my uh, workout playlist tracks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I I really did like that part so far. It was just it was it was good panel for panel. It was very good. Now, one thing I noticed. Let me know if I'm tripping. Now, Soy Phone, her bunkai, I didn't see no difference in appearance because it was supposed to be slightly hollified. You see the difference with Toshio, you know, even he pointed it out. But for whatever reason, it, her bunkai still looked the same. Unless it's something I'm missing, let me know down below if you notice something different. Now, it's Kane Dude. Man, I really wish we just got more of this character because. When they first revealed on the Star Knights, I, he was one of the Star Knights. I said, you know what? I'm really like this guy. He looked cool. I like his character design, his personality. Real sweet. I want to get more of him. But as you can see, and for the ones who read the manga, we're not going to get a lot of I don't even think at this point they're going to extend, you know, a lot with him. I do like the fight that he had with Toshiro. You know, it seemed very spot on accurate. Now, the moment when he fired the Snake Claw, that right there, this was a perfect example of why forever people will always debate about which is better, the anime or the manga. And not just with Bleach, any anime that's, you know, came from the manga because in the panel, you can see it clearly that yes, it's the tip of a head. I mean, the, 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 head, the tip of the snake's head. You can see it, you know, thus the move, snake claw. However, it seemed like this happened so fast and it was just, all these extra effects around it when i first watched it it seemed like it was like just just like that i caught just a glimpse of a snake's head and that i noticed but of course it was in motion so looking at the screenshot of it yes you can see it clearly it was the head of the snake now this also took me back to when grimjaw fired the grand grand ray serum i know a lot of you remember that in the manga i loved how i looked when he shot the grand ray serum at ichigo but in the anime, it seemed like when he shot it, it didn't have that same impact, that wow factor, you know? And when he fired it, it looked like he was just, just wailing and spraying everywhere. Now, yes, again, it was in motion. In the manga, it didn't, it wasn't drawn like that. So, I don't know, a lot of moments in attacks can be hit or miss. Again, I'm not saying the quality and the animation of the snake claw looked bad. I'm just saying it like it just happened so fast, like damn, I didn't even see, I, I barely seen the head of a snake unless you pause it, but either way, uh, I, I, I did like it, but uh, I wonder if, when you heard Hiyarimaru's voice, I wondered if uh, that was the same voice actor who did his voice, uh, that I do wonder. I like how Kubo put that in there, man. I do like, like, cause, you know, it, it's, I love to see the connection between Soul Reaper and his Pato Spirit. I, I, I love that. And also, I think BG9, he could have got out the way. When she fired that, I, I think he could have got out the way, but hey, whatever it is, what it is. I like the quality of that explosion, though. I really do. Um, very good, very good uh, quality. Now, on to the moment that so many people have been talking about Shinji with his Bunkai. Now, of course, I already know what his Bunkai could do. You know, and when I found out what it could do, you know, it, they revealed it in the novel. And of course, it's on, uh, what's that game? Bleach Brave Souls. And I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, so that's why he didn't use it during the fake kind of cruel time fight, yada, yada, yada. But that is a very, very dangerous broken ability. Um, they did it perfectly. No complaints at all. And I mean, I love the music. That, that, was, re that was a remixed track as well. Uh, shame on me for not remembering the name of that track, but... I just love it, man. That, that, that little grin, a smirk on his face, man. And all the soul dancers took each other out. I mean, it, it, was just, it was just a perfect, perfect animation, man. It was just spot on. And I think that Bunkai, man, if only 
he I think I seen a screenshot. I think he mentioned this on the Brave Souls game that he said he could have single-handedly, yes, yeah, single-handedly took out a lot of the Star Knights with his bunkai. You know, if they would have just all been killing each other, that that oh man, I, I really really wish Shinji would have got his uh, opportunity to be around a whole bunch of Star Knights. But I think he really tried to, you know, knock out a few birds with one stone. And he took on Bombietta, but we're gonna get to that in a second. So moving on to Ikaku, Yumachika, and Hisaki taking on masculine, masculine. Oh, we finally get to see James. But um, yeah, man, this just made them look so weak, I swear. Yeah, I know Hisaki got taken out. I know those other two got taken out. But it's just, yes, this is an extended fight we get to see, which is cool. But I mean, man, why why did they look surprised? When they jumped at Masky Mask, and I understand, you know, he was a Shikai and whatnot, and he caught the Zanpato. I, I think he caught one and blocked the other one, or he caught both. But either way, they were they looked surprised. What they thought it was gonna be a one shot, a one hit kill. I mean, at least Ikaku. He just should have went bunkai. Something. Something. I mean, he took the damn pill. I mean, he, but it is what it is, whatever. And again, what made it just seem so ridiculous. It just seemed damn near pathetic. Now, I'm not even gonna say damn near pathetic. It did look pathetic. He grabbed him by the time I told him, smacked him, threw Yumachika into a building, swinging Ikaku around. I'm like, it, it just looked like the buffoonery. I'm like, man, it, it's just because I swear they they've survived worse than that. I mean, I get it, nasty masculine. He's strong. Maybe when he bam. Rammed them two and two each other. It was just I maybe really stunned them. I maybe that really hurt like shit. But I, but still, come on now. I know they've put up with way worse than that. But whatever. <laughs> what was funny though? You all know what I'm talking about. Go back and watch it, please. But go back and watch it. <laughs> it's when Hisagi threw the sheet kind of wrapped around Masky Maskin's arm. The way he said what? <laughs> that what they all will say. His dub voice and his sub voice, I, I love it. I say a sub voice, but the raw, you know what I mean. Both voices, I, I love <laughs> Masty Masculine. It is funny. I think his dub voice, he has sort of like a, a southern country type uh, accent going on with him, but whatever. Either way, it's hella funny. So, I did notice that. Of course, when we cut the bomb, he had a hair crew, they're walking through, and of course, I swear, they kept this accurate, but <laughs> I, I, man. I never really caught this in the manga. I mean, this was in the manga, but it was like seeing it again. It was like, damn, big realization. When she threw the medallion, bam, it, I swear that's so weird. His head is gone. Like, she's seen him up top behind us. He's just, what the hell they think they're doing? She threw it. His head was just completely gone. But this next part, I get it. I would have picked a different way to do this, but I, I get Kubo wanted to showcase her power, her rage, her spirit energy, whatever you want to call it. When she was like, oh, I'm talking to myself this whole time. Where are you, you know? I'm gonna show you not to make fun of the leader, make me look stupid and all this stuff. And she have her little fit and hits the bear, tantrum, tantrum, and you know, and you see the big ass explosion, man. That was a real big explosion. But I would've, you know, she, she could've done that on an enemy or something, getting mad, but over that, I rather her get mad at the enemy. You know the typical, you won't defeat me or I won't get killed by the likes of you and get mad and angry. I know it's cliche, but but I guess this way it kind of fits her personality. You know, having a little hissy fit, you know, a little comical way, stumping her feet and getting mad, whatever. But I mean, you have a lot of people though, a lot of guys mainly who love doing some Bombietta. They <laughs> love Bombietta. I saw all on Twitter. That's all I see. Bombietta this, 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 Twitter, 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 Bombietta. Or, correction, huh, X. Yes, it's not called Twitter anymore. Real quick, are you going to continue to call it Twitter or X? Whatever. So anyway, oh man, this part right here, one of my favorites. Like, yet again, we get some good Shinji action. In my opinion, Shinji, he stole the show. He really did. This was Shinji's episode. Again, he activated that Shikai and what I like about this moment even in the manga they did it way better in the anime this moment in the anime was way better but I we got to actually see the effects so I wonder if this is what Aizen 
was truly seeing. Yeah, I think when he did it on Eisen, he was just like upside down, but it seemed like with this, maybe Shinji was training. Shinji was getting warped and distorted. He even was uh, speaking backwards. And now I've read two different translations or and or reasons. He practiced speaking backwards, but the other one I read was that he, since he was training, and a result of his training is he's able to you know speak backwards while they're well they're able to hear him speaking backwards but I think he practiced speaking backwards because at one point he was speaking backwards and then the next moment you know he's just speaking regular but anyway um again this was he, there you go explaining his ability again I just brought this up in the last review but see this is the thing it actually worked this time if if you're gonna explain your ability do it when you know for a fact you're gonna get that final blow or they're paralyzed or they can't move and you're gonna go for the kill or just do it talking to their corpse but I guess in Shinji's case while they're all just all distorted and messed up their equilibrium is thrown off yeah he can explain it you know they're over here they thinking he right there and everything. He's just talking to him, explaining. But, man, again, he shouldn't have done that to Eisen. Uh, but, man, Eisen, the fact that he was able to, even, even with explaining it, how Eisen was able to catch on, because I wonder if, really, if, if Shinji was all twisty and warpy and trippy to, in Eisen's eyes, but whatever. But, oh, you already know I'm about to speak on it. You already know I'm about to speak on it. That track that they was playing during Shinji's Shikai, like that. Right at first, I was like, it "Is is that some smooth McGroove R&B music? Like, what is this?" And you know what? It fit perfectly. It made me chuckle <laughs> a little bit, but I'm like, "Man, my dog Shinji. I've always liked Shinji ever since they've introduced Shinji. Man, it, it it was just fitting. It was perfect. And shout out to my subscriber, man. He's been down with me for." years you know anthony davis he sent me the link to the actual actual track to that full song and uh yeah it, it's smooth it fits you know shinji perfectly i want to hear that again when shinji when they show shinji fighting again i, I doubt that it happened because yes i do know when shinji will fight again and no i don't think they're gonna add that um into it and i it was one of those things look okay, you know what i could see that being you know one of the fit themes for me, you know what, let me know down below, what do you think my type of theme will be, you know, when I go into battle? Do you think it'll be epic and live action? Or do you think it'll be some smooth McGroove type of stuff, the way Shinji had it, you know? <laughs> me, personally, I can do it both ways, but man, I just thought that was funny, like, damn, that, that's something, you know, grab a little hollow, you know, spin her around, I'll do a little one-two step, I mean, it, it, I mean, I was like, this, this, is, <laughs> this is smooth. I really like it, but again, Shinji, he stole the show with this one. But one thing that is kind of effective is the fact that the way her ability is, man, even though her equilibrium is thrown off, she can just keep on just, you know, dispersing those reishi bombs and they just going off everywhere. But again, that's her just, you know, rapidly shooting them off. She's not going to nastily hit her target. She's just all messed up. So, you know, again, it's but it's better than someone just swinging <laughs> add nothing missing so of course we cut back to you know yuma chica and ikaku and isaki of course yuma chica is down for the count and we see uh masty masculine i see here we go with this team attack stuff which i love masty masculine he's wrapped up with Sasaki shikai and of course when ikaku goes in for the strike because you know masty masculine pulls this way and sagi you know he grins like yes got him and he throws the other one and he wraps him up completely tails uh, Ikaku to go when he goes to thrust with his Shikai and he hits him dead in the face. I mean, you see the yellow energy impact. You see his head go back, you see blood. I'm like, did he have, you know, blue vein activated? Or was it just the fact that Ikaku Shikai is just not strong enough to pierce Matthew Masculine? That was a straight up head blow. Obviously, I know it wasn't supposed to kill him because I know Ikaku does not take out Mask the Masculine, but I'm like, Dad, that's that's crazy. But I already know the outcome of that upcoming battle. And of course, yes, the one moment that uh, 
man, when I first read this in a manga, man, when Baki just activated the final holy forms all at once. <laughs> of course, I'm always rooting for the Soul Reapers, you know. Well, at that time, I was rooting for the Soul Reapers. I know the truth and the lore about these motivators. And, man, I don't know. I'm Team Visor all the way, but, you know. So, I felt real scared for them, man. I was looking at this like, damn. Just when they got their Bunkai back, you know, now the playing field has been even, you know. So, man, and again, man, like, Toshiro. Now, King of Lightning call him Trash Gaia, you know. Now, again, Toshiro, he looks sweet. I like his ability, his character. I like that he trains, everything. But when you actually look back for the people he's killed, who, 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 who has he killed? I don't even think Toshiro has taken out three people in the series, not even five. I, I, unless, again, unless I'm tripping. He didn't take out Luffy. Um, he didn't take out Kangu. Who was that he fought? Uh, Shenlong? On a Grim Giles fraction, I think. Did he take him out? Anyway, the point is, I'm like, damn. Got your Bunkai back. It was also, you know, just hollified, just, you know, for a moment. Took out Kang Du. Well, got him in, got him frozen. I think maybe he would have died if he would have stayed in there. Like, he would just eventually froze him. I don't know. But man, when he activated that final holy form, so she were already passed out along with Rangiku. I'm like, damn, like, so anyway, I'm just looking at all of that happening. I first reading the manga, I said, I, I was feeling scared for them, but I love the way they captured it in the manga. Very colorful, very bright. Then the way we seen Bobbietta with her phone standing, it was just real, real nice. Yeah, we seen a little bit of this in the trailer, but it looks spot on, man. I've seen a lot, I mean, a lot of animes when characters go in their new forms and they're charging up and everything gets revealed when the smoke clear you just see an eye then they charge up and the energy pushes the smoke away but the way these visuals are looking man and this bleach anime is it's like damn it is just i, I i'm loving it i i mean won't go argue you never seen nothing like me if you just go back but again i don't know how y'all watching this uh Bleach anime. I mean, I'm watching it. My 4K TV, you know, 65 inch. And then with my iMac, I mean, 4.5K enhanced retina display. So when I look at these game trailers, these anime trailers, I'm not seeing it in some basic quality. Half of you don't even watch YouTube at the highest best settings. So if you're watching me right now, thank you. Do you have it on the best settings? Or whatever you're watching on your phone, your TV, your PC, your iMac, do you have it in Mac settings? Because there are a lot of times people, I see comments, oh, this game didn't look that good. This anime don't look that good. Look, I'm like, what are y'all watching? Like, we are looking at two different things, or we're looking at the same thing, but we're watching on two different devices, or the quality is just night and day. Anyway, the visuals look spot on. I love the way these Final Holy Forms are looking being activated, and I know it's only gonna look better, especially when we see Ichibe fight Bak. I cannot wait. And then, of course, the final fight. But, I covered everything else. Okay, we get it. Episode was real good. Stingy uh, stole the show. They added in extra stuff from the manga. The stuff that they put in from the manga, it was down there frame for frame. I loved it. But let's talk about Ichigo's eyes. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. I know this is the one part you all wanted me to speak on. Um, I don't know why. It's like I keep forgetting that. Oh, yeah. It's going to come back to Ichigo after the credits. So once I fast forward through the credits, I'm like, okay. What are they gonna show now? I'm like, okay, he's still walking through, he's still walking through, still holding the damn wooden sword. I'm like, who is he gonna attack or spar with? And he's getting closer and closer to the gate. And when he looks down, he looks up, and you see the different iris of the pupils. And my instant thought was like, Ichigo with the Almighty? 
like what my boy with the almighty until i'm just like let's get real so let's control our bleach hype for all the bleach fans let's get real and yes i've seen so many comments debates and arguments people saying no he has the almighty no he doesn't i mean he was seeing visions of the soul king oh yeah that's the thing oh you're gonna see it the rayo rayo however you want to pronounce it a lot of times i still call it the soul king so yeah that's right i said it so um, i still call it the soul king um but that really 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 shuts it down with the trailer we was thinking like oh man is that or is it could it no we see now it's the soul king because we see the limbs getting removed yep and they explained this you know in the novels so right there that super confirmation that he is going to see the backstory in history of the soul king what is the purpose of this to make him feel bad or sad about the soul king to make him look at the shinigami in a different light to create sympathy so Ichibe can sort of let him know like hey there's a chance you're gonna have to be the next soul king you see what happened don't you feel bad i mean if you want everything to stay balanced you're gonna have to be the new soul king maybe that's what it is but back to them having the eyes so this is another thing i thought about for the longest well ever since the episode has been out I'm like, wait a minute, maybe that's just a reflection. I'm like, maybe that's a reflection. He's actually meeting up to the Soul King. But, nah, nah, if you look at the Soul King's eyes, his eyes doesn't look like that, but at the same time. The Soul, you see the pupil in each corner. And each goes in the center. And the Soul King, he has these weird pupils, but the way they go out, you know, Two corners here, two corners down there. Maybe, maybe, maybe I, I, as the youngsters say, maybe I'm reaching. You know, <laughs> I could be wrong, but I think it's a reflection because if you look at the, you see, you clearly see Ichigo's pupil. They don't look, the other pupils don't look as dark. It looks like it's like a reflective, like just the pupil in his eye. However, until I watched it again, oh yeah, makes no mistake. I don't just watch these episodes one time. The first time I watched it, just as a straight up bleach fan watching it just enjoying it you know I'm eating something or I'm sitting back chilling and then I watch it again noticing things catching things taking mental notes like okay okay and maybe for extra giggles like, you know I just watch it again you know it's this is bleach man I'm not just gonna watch the one episode and that's it I know people who actually do that they actually have the audacity to watch this magnificence just one time Ain't no way. My brother, he does that bull crap. The whole first season one, I watched that at least, hmm, I want to say seven times. That's a, that's a low number coming from me. I watched it multiple times sub. I watched it multiple times dub. Anyway, back on track to the eyes. What makes me think at this point, yeah, those eyes are actually Ichigo's. He looks down and look up. Think about why did he just look down and then look up to, to reveal it. It's not that he's walking and then he gets stumbled and then he's looking at a reflection. No, he stops, he looks down and looks up with the reveal. But do I think it's the almighty though? No. So right here, I'm saying those pupils are in his eye. Yeah, I do believe that's not a reflection. Those pupils are in his eyes, but I don't think it's the almighty. So, because come on now, let's let's think about it. He has the Almighty. This is gonna change the whole story, <laughs> you know, from this like, or if not the story moving forward, it may change the ending. Maybe when he's getting slapped around by Box Energy during the final fight, you know, Box sitting at the throne, he's just smacking each go around. Maybe that triggers the Almighty. Who knows? I doubt it. Or maybe it's the opposite of the Almighty. How the Almighty, he can look into the all possible futures. Maybe, I don't know, again, this is a weird, weird theory on some of Yuri <laughs> Udohara stuff. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe he can look into the past. That's why he was able to see the flashback of the Soul King. And I swear, if I'm right about any of these, you know, 
give your boy some points, you know, down below. I'm gonna I'm show them give myself some points in the next review. Well, whenever they reveal what they reveal. But yeah, maybe he's those eyes were signifying the fact that it's the opposite of the Almighty to see the past. Who knows? But I mean, this is a part of Ichigo's training. Maybe this is to learn a new ability or just to get a bigger understanding. But according to the chapters, I mean, next episode we should see Ichigo ready to go so whatever he's seen this may just be the last of him like of this special training because yeah he's gonna have to make his way down to the Serate according to the uh, chapters and uh yeah but that's about it elites I love this episode 10 out of 10 no complaints it was cool had my chuckles wasn't boring the pacing was good visuals spot on I like Shinji's little one two, step, one two step new thing. You know, technically it's not new, but you know, it's, it's just new to a lot of us because we've heard it for the first time. But man, Bleach is just on a roll, man. So give me your thoughts, comments, and concerns. Do you think Ichigo has the Almighty? Do you think he doesn't have the Almighty? And uh, yeah, see you all next week for the next Bleach episode. It's me, Captain Rise of Ace. Thanks for watching. Signing out.